Hey everybody, welcome back to the RGR Football Channel. My name is Daniel Harms. I was able to get to treat to Chiefs training camp yesterday. Unfortunately, it was rained out, so I didn't get to see a whole lot of things. But we are going to dive into a little bit of the things that I got to see a glimpse of while I was at camp for the 15, 20 minutes that I was out there. So I appreciate you guys tuning in this morning. I hope you enjoyed your weekend. Brian and I are going to have a ton of content for you this week, even with Game Pass continuing to be down until further notice. Lots of camp stuff, lots of camp reactions we can talk about. So let's go ahead and jump in. The first couple things that I noticed right away, Ben Neiman, okay? I know that a lot of us have a bad taste in our mouths after last year, which is is 100% reasonable. He was not very good. It looked like he was a little bit overweight, to be honest with you. It looks like he tried to bulk up a bit, like Ryan's mentioned a couple times, to try to stop the run a little bit better. And it looks like this year... He has he's lost some of that weight. He looks much better in terms of getting around the field, moving, and being in the spots that he needs to be in. Last year, it kind of felt like he was a, a guy that knew where he needed to be, but he just couldn't do it because he physically he couldn't get there. He's a bit lighter now. It, he moves much better from what I saw. So I do believe that he's going to be the, the Chiefs dime backer this year when they do use dime. I know that Anthony Hitchens has switched in a little bit there as well until the rookie – you know, Bolton and second year player, Willie Gay really get up to speed. Those two know the playbook way better. Neiman has been said multiple times to be one of the smartest defensive players there. And it's just been more of his physical limitations to get in those spots. So that's going to be a thing. I truly believe that he's probably going to take most of those reps at the dimebacker. Like last year, I think he's going to look better this year. So don't, I know a lot of people don't like that, but he's going to be on this team this year and probably for the first for, because he's a future if he's cheap, you know, it's, it's a guy who knows the system and he's a good backup in case you need him. So that's probably what's going to be happening there. The whole Nick Kaiser retirement thing is a little interesting. Could have to do with his injury. I just wanted to touch on it really quick. It did come down the wire. They re-signed Brian Witzman, which kind of points to their ineptitude in terms of what they think on the offensive line in the depth that they have. So that's something to watch going into the, you know, the, the cuts at training camp. Um, what I'd really liked to see, um, was Andy was doing a little bit of partial his install yesterday and I did, I did see Daryl and Clyde on the field at the same time. They were in the backfield split and then they split Clyde out wide, like as an actual wide receiver down the slot. That was something that, that caught my eye specifically. I really like seeing him be out there wide by himself with Daryl in the backfield. Um, it can help you in the RPO game because you, you still have the ability to run with the offensive line and Daryl in the backfield. And then you can get those one-on-one -on -one matchups. If you, you see a linebacker go out there with Clyde, you can switch that RPO up instead of, you know, handing it off and throw it because you're going to get that mismatch. And in those tight window areas where there's not much, where there's not many players, you can really get him in a, in a, in a run after the catch ability. So that's something I really like to see from camp itself. And then there was, you know, one-on-ones, and I, I like seeing Mike Dana rotate with the defensive ends and the ones we know he's been doing that. I think he's primed for a nice breakout year. I really do. He looks incredible. The dude's a physical specimen. I didn't realize how tall he was until I saw him at practice today, uh, today, which is Sunday. So, yeah, it was a lot of fun to see them up close and get to see some of these guys. Um, I think that now with the tight end situation – We've talked a bit about, you know, Bell being the the blocking tight end. But what if Andy Reid's like, no, I'm not feeling blocking tight ends anymore. Maybe he wants to have a Jody Fortson to make this roster. That's possible. I, I think that that's very possible. I think that they keep through three tight ends. And right now it's a battle for Marcus Kent. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, it's a battle with Fortson and Bell to who's going to make this roster. They have three preseason games coming up. And as Andy Reid has now come out and said, He's not going to treat this like it was two weeks, two, three, and four of the preseason where the, the starters are not going to play in the second or the third or the fourth preseason game. It's going to treat it like the first three. So everyone's going to play on the first team, which does mean that some of these guys on the end, like specifically a boodle, a, a key, these guys are not going to get those reps you need to see in that final preseason game as much as we expect. So, it's going to be a push for some of these guys, but I think that right now one of those battles to watch is definitely Jody Fortson and Blake Bell. Obviously, I think Bell has the edge slightly right now because he's been in the system before in terms of being a starter, not starter quotations, as a 12 tight end personnel set. He was the 
the two. So I think that he has the edge right now, but I think Fortson can definitely make this roster if he continues to show up in the passing game because it's hard to deny talent with a guy that big. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that. Uh, I saw Thor, uh, Thornhill get movement today he looks pretty good i think that they're just really trying to work him in slower just to make sure he's 100 percent. they don't want to rush him too much especially considering that he's going to be the, one of the top tandems in, in the nfl at safety with him and, and matthew so i really believe that he's going to be able to do that at full health this season i mentioned you know key i think that the chiefs might keep five safeties and Watts might be the man out there. So I think that he has done a really good job of getting on the field and the ability that he's, you know, the time he's been afforded that. So look for him to probably make this roster when it comes down to it. I think Boodle, I just mentioned, will be on the bubble. The last guy or the first guy not to make the roster, I think. I think they'll keep five, you know, defensive backs. I think people really forget that Fenton is on this team as a, as a corner. So he's not going to just like not be on this roster i think some people project boodle to be a starter or not starter but to make the roster but he's not going to push out a guy like fenton who's played extremely well given his draft status six round pick so i'm all i'm all with fenton making this roster and i think the boodle is a nice guy to have off of the practice squad assuming you can get in there i think that the chiefs do a pretty good job of getting most of their guys to to the practice squad that they want so and you know Watching the install a little bit, I did get to see Byron Pringle being included in the three wide receiver sets with Travis Kelsey and Clyde edwards alaire which is something that I really like to see, really liked to see. Adam Teicher tweeted later as part of their indoor process that he caught a couple touchdowns today in in the indoor process, deep, deep deep touchdowns. So I'm very interested to see how this wide receiver room shakes out. I do believe Marcus Kemp's going to make it, so he's I think he's going to be that sixth guy who can come in and be a you know not just a special teams guy. I think he can play some snaps this year. I'd like to see him get some targets in the, in the past game and definitely his size and his physicality. He can use in the run blocking as well. So I'm excited to see how this is going to shake out. Camp was unfortunately a bust and I'm sorry. I didn't get to see some of you. I know that some of you were there and unfortunately we didn't get to meet up. I'm hoping maybe in the future we can get this thing going on um, next year. Hopefully at camp, I'll be at more of them. It really just depends on the schedules. So Again, I hope you guys get a little bit of information from what I saw. Again, it was just snippets. I didn't get to see much of actual full team 7-on-7, 11-on-11, on seven, 11 on 11 just because they went inside. So, unfortunately, the rain has it rained on us pretty good. So, we got really, really wet uh, today. So, again, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like, sub, hit that bell. We're getting these videos pumping out every single day of the week. Tomorrow, actually today, is the live stream. Make sure to tune in tonight. Ryan and I will be on to talk with you guys through this camp process and everything that's going to be going on. So I appreciate you guys' time this morning and have a great day. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.